But today we have two European network of transmission system operators, TSOs, one for electricity and one for gas. What the European Commission proposes is to create a new European network, a third separate network operators entity dedicated solely to hydrogen. This is very much in line with the vision developed by the European Commission in its impact assessment report with two infrastructure pathways, one for future uh, pure hydrogen-based infrastructures and one for methane infrastructures, including biomethane. And now, as uh, it is called, uh, we'll have uh, different tasks that are building on the one of the existing European network of TSOs in terms of the promotion of the uh, networks, dedicated hydrogen network, the adoption and publication of 10-year network development plans, as well as the coordination of cross-border infrastructures, interconnectors, and the elaboration of specific technical rules, such as network codes. This idea of creating a new EU coordination organization has received mixed criticism, and we reviewed them in the report, uh, also because it appears as a too sophisticated setup for a market that does not yet exist. Separate infrastructure for hydrogen and renewable gases seems uh, even more complex to put in place at the distribution level, and the report argues for distinguishing transmission and distribution uh, levels for hydrogen. The interaction between gas and hydrogen, TSOs and DSOs, might be unavailable in practice. And today there is one joint organization at the European level, NTASOG, and if we have two uh, NTASO organization for the different gases, that might be even counterproductive for ensuring energy system integration. That will uh, potentially complicate the coordination. Finally, many hydrogen networks will be repurposed for gas ones, which requires a coordination between operators for the management of the assets. So for these reasons, the report conclusions are very much aligned uh, on the position of the parliament. Access to the grid is a fundamental issue for enabling producers to get access to the supply market. And this is true both at the domestic level, but as well at the cross-border levels. And therefore, the issue of uh, access to the grid and uh, the regulatory conditions for it is fundamental. Here, we need as well to distinguish between the connection rules and access to grid capacity. Most of the provisions in the uh, proposal focus on access to grid capacity. When pushing for the integration of new gases into the grid, there are several elements to take into account for that regime. We need to distinguish between the different situations, clearly, and the report argues for distinguishing between uh, transmission and distribution for hydrogen infrastructures. One can as well look at the regulatory and financial incentive for promoting uh, injections and um, into the grid. So the proposal from the Commission combined both regulatory and financial incentives. Already at the national level, we do have some different regimes, so it will be good with harmonization of minimum requirements. For example, of national legislation, we have uh, certain ones defining a right to injection for biomethane into the natural gas network. Others uh, define a priority access regime for biomethane. Another important element is that we need to preserve the value of hydrogen uh, when we decide to inject it into the natural gas infrastructure and uh, safety requirements attached to that. In terms of first access to cross-border trade, the European Commission uh, proposes for hydrogen to remove cross-border tariffs for access to dedicated hydrogen networks at interconnection points. And this will be phased in in 2030 or more in line with what the Council has negotiated 2036 to have enough time. 
And the Commission argues that it is already the case for uh, electricity that we have a similar mechanisms to uh, create a level playing field for hydrogen production and to avoid the so-called pancaking of, of tariffs uh, between the transmission providers' um, borders. Uh, that is important as well to prevent uh, an increase of costs for final consumers. At the same time, the Commission also wants that implementing a system of zero-level cross-border tariffs uh, will not be uh, appropriate for the recovery of costs of the TSOs, and therefore a cost-sharing mechanism should be implemented, as we know, from electricity. So we have a proposal um, on inter-TSO compensation mechanisms it is very like this is also left uh, to uh, network calls in terms of detailed implementation and the european commission will be empowered to adopt implementing apps establishing network calls on these issues so the discussions at the council uh, show that some member states prefer keeping the existing tariff mechanisms and uh, apply it for hydrogen, while others uh, would like to postpone the implementation of uh, zero-level cross-border tariffs for hydrogen networks. So we may expect further negotiation as part of the trilogue. When it comes to a cross-border uh, trade for a renewable and low-carbon gases and possible tariff discounts, the European Commission is also proposing various tariff discounts to be applicable with uh, the main objective to financially encourage the uptake of cross-border trade. So here again, uh, we have uh, different positions for the member states and uh, we uh, may have a phase in of uh, this regime. Uh, as part of the third revision of the draft proposal, amendments were added to provide uh, regulatory authorities with the competence to decide exactly on that matter. So it could also be a subject of uh, national competence. Regional cooperation in the EU is seen as an important step in developing forward the internal market for energy in general, and that will also apply to the internal market in gases. The provisions in the draft request gas directive are still vague on this point, and, and the report comments on that. Therefore, the recommendation is to reinforce uh, these provisions to provide clear guidance to not only regulatory authorities, but as well to transmission system operators, TSOs, and hydrogen network operators. If we look a bit closer, the draft gas, gas directive requires member states to promote regional cooperation between natural gas TSOs and hydrogen network operators. And this is done with the view of creating this competitive internal market for gases and to facilitate integration of notably isolated systems um, such as gas islands. In addition, the Commission itself is requested in the proposal to provide sufficient guidance on regional cooperation when it considers it's necessary to then adopt EU rules. But the provisions in the directive do not provide much information as to the scope of those guidance as to the legal bindingness of them and their content. Similarly, ACER is also given the role of making appropriate recommendations when it considers that bidding rules are regional, uh, on regional cooperation are required, but the wording of the current proposal indicates that only guidance and recommendation will be put forward by the Commission and ACER respectively when they deem that request. So therefore, we need further uh, insurance as to the way to promote regional cooperation, and it is welcome that the European Parliament pushes in that direction. The report is uh, offering a comparative analysis of the proposed legislation for uh, gas and hydrogen, and uh, the already adopted legislation and the proposed legislation. And here indeed, we point out 
some risks in terms of inconsistency, overlaps, and possible contradictions. So if we look at need for more consistency between the different policy goals here, uh, one element that should be uh, better addressed is the manner to promote renewable gases across sectors, and notably a sustainability and fiscal criteria. The legislature, in our view, will need to ensure consistency across the sectors for the quality and competitive use of notably biomass and biogas. And here there is a link to the Renewable Energy Directive, Red 2, uh, that deals with the promotion of renewable energy in the transport sector, as well as certification criteria for biofuels, but as well uh, sustainability and uh, greenhouse gas emission saving criteria for biofuels, bioliquids, and biomass fuels. In terms of possible overlaps, the report points that on the aspect of grid connection for renewable gases production, there is a risk uh, of overlap with, again, the RED2 directive. RED2 deals with access to and operation of the grids, notably, and several requirements are directly relevant for the integration of renewable gases into the gas grid notably in terms of uh, the need for grid extension uh, in the red two, but as well uh, the uh, role, the competence of the member states in requesting TSOs and DSOs to publish technical rules on connection to the network, also in terms of gas quality, gas pressure requirements, gas moderation, and uh, the fact that they can also request uh, TSOs and DSOs to publish their connection tariffs, to connection uh, to gas infrastructures for renewable sources based on a series of criteria. Finally, there are possible contradictions, again, with RED2 directive in terms of access uh, regime. Here, RED2 requires the member states to ensure that rules concerning authorization, certification, and licensing for plants and associated uh, transmission distribution for uh, renewable space energy do not discriminate between applicants, so ensuring a level playing field. But there is a risk when you introduce a certain regime in terms of priority access, notably for renewable gases, this will be contradictory to this uh, principle of level playing field. So here, there is also a need of alignment with the RED2 uh, directive. If we take first the most controversial points, certainly we will have the question of establishing a new network entity for the TSOs, this time for the network operators for hydrogen, or whether this should be integrated into the mandate of the NTA, so G already existing. So this is something that really uh, is different in terms of position between the European Commission, the Council and the Parliament. So that's a first point. Then uh, we will probably see a discussion as to the increase of uh, hydrogen production with the view of having a common purchase platform, whether there could be a link made uh, here. Uh, third, uh, the question of regional cooperation promotion and in terms of cross-border capacity, access, possible discounts, and how to further reinforce the provisions in the directive and the regulation in terms of uh, promotion of regional cooperation. Fourth, the consistency with the Renewable Energy Directive, including the newly adopted delegated acts on renewable hydrogen, might be an issue. And finally, the uh, threshold date for the entry into force of the new main regime, would it be in terms of tariffs of access that was originally set by European Commission to uh, 2030, uh, could be moved to 2035. This will be also an important point of negotiation. On other aspects uh, that build on the gas directive and regulation, notably uh, for the regime for uh, gases, natural gases, uh, there um, is a continuation from the previous regime. So they will not be uh, major changes, except the fact that we need to further promote renewable gases, including bio biomethane. <laughs> 